So the Nova is running great. Um, no doubts about that. But now, whenever I get it up to speeds above 70 mile an hour, I shouldn't say now when I get up to speeds above over 70 mile an hour. But since I get it up to speeds over 70 mile an hour now, I get a heck of a vibration from the rear end. Um, be driving along, all of a sudden the car would start to howl and vibrate. I push and let it slow down it gets uh, to about 60 mile an hour and the vibration goes away and then I add more throttle and it would come back and then I push in the clutch and the vibration would stay until the car slowed down and then I tried shifting out of gear and uh, the vibration stayed the car went slowed down so that meant it was beyond the transmission it was the output shaft the transmission back so that led me to um, the drive shaft the rear end and the rear tires basically well I just put new wheel bearings in it last year so I know I don't think it's that um, I put a brand new drive shaft in it so I kind of eliminated that I mean this car only has a hundred and some miles on it then thirdly I went and I decided to check I had the rear end professionally rebuilt so I eliminated that so I was trying to think about what it could be, and that kind of led me to the tires. But I eliminated the tires because it didn't seem like it was coming from one one side or the other. It seemed like it was more central. So, and it's very rare for both tires to go bad at the same time. So lastly, I took a look at my pinion angle. Because I figured it had to be, you know, drive train. And that was one thing I never really checked. <laughs> well... <coughs> Long story short, and there's plenty of videos on how to change your pinion angle, or check your pinion angle, and I might go over it a little bit if I get time, but I want to get this car back up and running by Saturday. Today's Monday. I only got the evenings to work on it. Uh, what I plan on doing is I uh, checked the pinion angle, and they said that you want to be below 2 degrees from what I read, and anything over four degrees you'll have a significant vibration and whenever I measured mine I was at six and a half degrees so what I mean by pinion angle is let's see if I can pull out a marker here reaching into my pocket I usually have a marker in my pocket for you know, marking things should have rehearsed this but I didn't plan on going this far into it there it is. I lost it. Got it back. That's not it again. There it is again. Okay, last time. Okay. So let's say take your drive shaft off and that's the C of your output yoke. Okay, this is your rear end. This is the cross section. Okay, this is the C part of it. What you want to do is take and jack your car up or truck so you can get under it. Take your drive shaft out. Okay, and then you put your level against these two ears in the vertical plane. And my car was at. degrees almost 100 degrees so we'll say it was 89.99 okay measured in this plane so it was dang near straight up and down and then you come over and on this car I have a companion flange okay it's just a flange some of your Toyotas have companion flanges on both ends this car is a companion flange on this end and I put my drive my um, what do you angle finder up there and it turns out I was at all right, it's 83.5. That's what it was. 83. Sorry, 83.5 degrees. Now keep in mind I was flipping it from this side to this side, so that means that my transmission is pointed 83 degrees down, and my drive shaft's at almost a 90. Now. Why does that matter? Well, I'll tell you why that matters. If you ever look at your 
your U joint and your axle are off, or your drive shaft are offset. And what they're trying to do is you need to have, by having equal and opposite angles, the vibration caused by the rotation of the U joint is nullified. The, vib the vibration waves put in the drive shaft coming from this end are supposed to be canceled out by the ones coming from this end. But that only works if they're sitting at the same angle. You get it? Now you so what we have to do is we could either take my transmission and put it at 90 degrees, which would take a lot. I mean, that's cross members, K members, the front end of the engine, the whole everything would have to tilt up. <clears throat> in which case, there's a firewall and everything else in the way, and there's already an interior. Or we can change this angle. Back in the day, what they used to do, and you still do, if I was building this car from scratch, I would do it all over again as you cut your spring perches off. And then put, grind the axle all down smooth, put a new spring perch on, put your U-bolts on, and then rotate it until you got a matching angle. But what I purchased from eBay, da da da, two and a half inch wide, six degree shims, made in China. Engineer in the U.S. though. And what we're going to do with those is we're going to put them under the spring perches on top of the spring perch under the axle and that will rock it up. It should not change your U-bolt. There is a pin that goes down through. You might want to buy the center pins too. I got them right here. I have a Amazon. Um, but we're going to basically do a review of how well this works and how easy it is to install versus cutting and welding everything. So I get the car up in the air, get the back tires off, and start from there. I doubt I'll get very far today because it's already 20 after 6. I'll get to play to about 7.30. Alright, let's do it. Alright, wheels off, we're up in the air. I wanted to double check and ensure that my shim is as wide as my leaf springs because you don't want you know, it on here just rocking and I also figured something that I didn't think about is I'm probably going to have to undo I have a rear anti-sway bar and I'm probably going to have to undo that uh, when I do this but basically I take the sway bar off or out, undone, whatever, undid it. And then I'm going to take the shock mount off because it's booked to the leaf spring pad, excuse me. And then I gotta take these four bolts off. Or at least on the opposite side, I'm gonna run them all the way out, uh, loose. So that way I can maybe get a jack under here or under the axle. I'll put my jack under the axle and I'll just lift one side at a time. And then we'll have to clamp, put some clamps on these so they don't move. And then take that bolt that's in here apart, take it out, and slide my shim in. Now, this shim head does have a top and a bottom. It doesn't have a left and a right, but it does have a top and a bottom. You notice on the bottom there, it's just a flat hole. But on the top, it's got a little semicircle in it that's so that the bolt will head will sit flush okay and then that goes to on the bottom but all right nothing to it but to do it let's do it all right that went a little quicker than expected took the shock off the mounting plate took the plate the whole way off uh, disconnected my anti-sway bar and then put my jack underneath it and just jacked up this side. That side, if I don't know if you can see, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, the nuts are still on. Oop, focus, focus. So oh, it won't focus. But the nuts are still on. It's just loose. Okay. And then that right there is the nut you're trying to get to. This is the pin that holds your leaf spring pack together. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put those C-clamps, one on each side, 
there's not a whole lot of pressure. You want uh, that's another thing too. Make sure your jack stands are under the frame and not under the axle, or else this could turn out really bad. If you undo your axle bolts while it's holding up the car. But um, I'm gonna spin that nut off. Wait, that nut. Uh, right there. After I get these clamps on, then I should be able to put my shim in place and put the new bolt in. All right. All right. Here's the recipe for success. I took my shock mount off. Took my plate off. Got these guys figured out. And then I got my jack out. I jacked the rear end up. So. This axle is completely off the leaf spring. And right in there's the center pin. And what you're going to want to do is take this nut off the bottom and give it a whack or two up through the top. Some of them have a slot in them, these ones don't. I've been using a, a pair of vice grip pliers. And my new ones. Make sure, I didn't realize this, but there's actual different diameters of these things. Uh, this one's a 3 8 The first pins I bought were 5 16 We'll see if Amazon will take them back. If not, um, I'm going to go ahead and use these. Uh, like I said, this one does have a screw slot in it, but I still found that in this tight confines, it's actually just a little better to use the vice grips. But uh, I'll get that out, and then I'll film a little bit more, and I'll show you... Uh, I'll show you uh, maybe the installation, what I'm talking about. Okay, bye. Alright, I got the bolt out. I had to drop that plate. These doohickeys are, uh, the, with that plate on the bottom, that other overload spring type doohickey on there. It's, uh, the clamps are too close together for me to do anything. So I took it off. I just thought, I did the other side already and I thought that might be a better way. But anyways, um, make sure you got your top side up. Start your bolt in. And then slide it in from one side and find out that we're not high enough, are we? Let me see if I can still do this. Where is that hole? There it is. All right. Now, you can see I got a lot of excess at the bottom. Don't worry about that. Once we put um, this plate back up and put the nut on and run her tight, I will go ahead and cut that off. That's what I meant to say. I lost my train of thought. Alright. See you after I get it cut off. Alright, there it is installed. That's our six degree shim on top of the pad. This pad will come down, sit right on top of that. And then we'll tighten up our U-bolts. I already cut off the excess length. She's all tightened up. We can take these C-clamps off now. And uh, start putting her back together and take her for a test drive. Woohoo. Alright, I hope you can see this. But you see how I got that pinion yoke? I got the drive shaft out of it. Drive shafts right there. And focus, focus. Come on. Yeah, stupid camera. Anyway, there's my pinion yoke. So I'm going to take my handy dandy fancy level. I hope you can read that, but that's 88.1 degrees now. I have it on the suspension. No, it's not held up by the jacks. You can see I got still have jack stands under it. They're touching. Well, actually, now they're maybe a quarter inch gap there. But either way, the car's not going to fall far. I know, but you guys, if you comment, you're gonna say, "Oh, you should have have your jack stands in." But anyway, this here side, if I can show it to you, 
is the flange side. Okay. Now, I'm going to take a measurement here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. Oh, let me scooch a little further down. Eighty six point two three. So that puts us well within the two degrees that we are allowed. I'm sorry, I'm kind of looking all around with you. Yeah. And we're right about a degree and a half off. So that is well within the range. Now, you might say to yourself, and I kind of did too until I gave it some thought. Hold on, I'm trying to get up off my jack stand. Uh, I'm getting old. <laughs> you say to yourself, well, you said that you were six degrees off. And I was. I'll stand by that forever. You're not going to get much more sophisticated in measuring it than what I just did. Now, why when you install a 6 degree shim, did it not go up 6 degrees? Well, there's a few thoughts on that one. Number one thought is, this maybe it wasn't machined exactly perfect. Maybe my axle surface isn't completely flat. Whenever you tor torque it down... It kind of flattens the spring out under it a little bit. Maybe that caused some play. But here's more what I think is. This is not a perfect world. So there's always like some unseen variable whenever you're doing stuff. And that's where I think I'm at. Is uh, Maybe I tighten the spring perches down a little bit more. Um, maybe because the bolts aren't all in the exact same place. Anyway, there, there's a couple variables in there that could have led to another degree or so of deflection. Um, but anyway, because we're within range, though, I'm not going to mess with it unless it makes noise while we're driving. If it makes noise while we're driving, then all bets are off. I'm going to cut the car in half and try to figure out what's going on. But if it doesn't growl, I'm not going to complain. So keep that in mind when you're ordering these shims. Go for perfect don't cut yourself short because your world's not perfect and don't be surprised if you get them in and it wasn't exactly right and then you gotta order more shims I might actually maybe an 8 degree shim would have been better I'm gonna leave it alone though because of a it might work it's according to what I read we're in within a uh, acceptable range and B um, Whenever you're, dra you're accelerating, whenever you do a hard acceleration, like a lot of drag cars will put a lot of nose down in their uh, pinions because whenever they hit it, that pinion tends to rock up as the suspension and everything moves. So, mm, maybe it'll work. But I'll see how it does and maybe shoot the last video of me driving it. It may not be today. I got a lot to get done and I'm running out of daylight, but we'll try for it. Okay, bye-bye.